Welcome to my channel. I continue to talk about all the art supplies I own and use in coloring and this video will be about my gouache and acrylic paints. Sadly, comparing to pencils or watercolor paints, I have very limited use of these paints. I know that potentially they can be very helpful for coloring books, especially coloring books with thin paper which doesn't allow to use water-soluble pencils or watercolor paints, but I also have very limited skills in using acrylic paints and gouache and I never felt confident. That's one of the skills to use more of uh, acrylic and gouache in my coloring books, which I definitely want to develop. I can't say that I practice a lot especially during last months, but I always remember about such goal. I think that first I will show you some of the works in the coloring books where I managed to use acrylic or gouache and then I will actually show you what kind of paints I own. Sadly, I have probably just two or three pictures where almost everything mostly was colored with uh, acrylic or gouache paints. My first work where I used acrylic everywhere apart from her skin, it was this work in uh, Coloring Haven magazine and I wanted to turn this spell craft picture into a page dedicated to flamenco dance. I participated in color along where we had to color something um, related to dances and I decided that this one actually can be a nice representation of flamenca. I also got just a day or two before when I started this page my set of acrylic paints and that's where I started to play with them. What can I say? This background for this page it worked. You can see those rough brush strokes which I did with red, orange and brown acrylic paint on top of the yellow underpaint. For me it represented fire and passion. And for this page it worked, but I wouldn't say that in many other cases if I would get such untidy background with visible brush strokes, I would be happy. Here it was deliberate, but I know that to do such kind of background it's easier comparing to um, background with much more smooth gradients. So I know how to do such kind of the background, but I struggled a lot with much more softer and delicate color gradients. I will show you later. Here I also did her dress with black paint with a little bit of magenta and violet highlights. And I know that acrylic paints, they are wonderful underpaint for all pencils. Even if you own budget cheap pencils on the watercolor underpaint or acrylic underpaint, usually they work much better. When surface has bigger texture, better tools with this paint cover, all pencils work much better. So I do love to use uh, paint first and then on top of it to add color accents. I remember that I did her hair in such way. I color them with dark brown and then I added highlights. It's also good that you can use lighter pencils on top of the dark paint. Very, very easy to do highlights. So this one it wasn't very bad and I do love this work. Next I have these two books where I also tried to use mostly paints for the background. Here I managed to do the background, those strange fiery cloud, but I think that they look quite well and matching the idea of this page. And claws of the fox also with the uh, with acrylic paint, I believe. Then uh, I used acrylic also to mask some of the black lines to, uh, to add a little bit of texture of fur here on the head, on the hair. 
And that's probably now the most frequent use of my acrylic paints when I use them on top of pencils, when I need to mask black lines and when I don't own Posca in or acrylic marker in matching color. But at least part was made with acrylic paint and again you can see that background it looks quite rough and here the idea of those clouds it allowed me to use such technique but for many other pictures I would consider such background as a total failure. And of course here paper is really good for acrylic paints. Here I have two works made with paints. Here on top you can see one of my favorite examples how I now use paints. I love to use difference of textures. If I do matte first layer with gouache or with acrylic paints, then on top of it I can easily sprinkle my mm, opaque watercolors or my perlescent or metal paints and they create be beautiful difference of textures. I hope that you can see it. And because of the permanent uh, character of acrylic paints, you never are afraid to add another layer of paint of different texture on top. So first layer it will be safe and untucked. And that's why I love acry black acrylic paint. It's a lifesaver. For all failed pictures, black acrylic paint, it always helps to save your page. Here I also used my set of gray paints. I will show you later. They are slightly muted colors, similar to graffitins actually, where we have blue mixed with gray, brown mixed with gray, violet mixed with grays, and that's how I achieved those dark colors on the airs, on the mountains. Well, it's nice and probably it's the most interesting set of acrylic paints which I own. I actually purchased it for myself when I wanted to color architecture, especially all castles, all stone works. As I said, it's perfect for such purposes. Just don't ask me why I hadn't done it in all my books. Well, that's another one of my constant reminders to myself what I actually need to do and what I actually need to try to do in my coloring books. I have these acrylic paints, I start to be afraid that they will dry <laughs> before the moment until I actually start to use them. But quite often it's uncomfortable to step out of my comfort zone, so I grab my pencils, I color something simple without struggling and yeah, that's a problem. But I hope that one day I will find in myself strength to color with more unusual art supplies and the set of paints it's definitely will be one of them. Next I did this bear. I did video on my channel where I explained those basic basics of using um, paint in coloring books and there I mentioned how important it is to fill your paints and to fill how much of water you need to use because it depends from the paper and it also depends from the type of cover you want to achieve. You know that if you add more paint into more water into acrylic, you will get effect similar to watercolors. If you get if you use a lesser amount of water, you will be using more creamy texture of the paints, but it requires totally different technique of coloring. And here it was quite complicated to do nice and smooth gradient. I simply wanted to use two shades of similar green colors, but one was slightly lighter. I wanted to use it closer to the head of the bear. And one is maybe shade one shade darker, which I needed here near the pine tree. But here the problem was that I wasn't able to make a nice smooth blending of those paints directly on the paper with my brush, because I also had to go around all those intricate images of the pine, of the bear. You know, when normal artists start to paint, he uses 
flat brush to prepare the background to do the smooth gradient and on top of it artist starts to paint actually the main subject but in our coloring books we need to go around the main image which already exists and for me it's a big problem i tried several techniques i used smaller brush first to outline and then bigger brush to fill in empty areas it worked but still uh, sometimes i can clearly see border between those two areas my brush strokes also quite often are visible. I can see them here and here. And sometimes I don't like this effect and I start to think that for the time which I spent by doing this background and also trying to do fur on the uh, bear and bark on the pine tree, I would color the same page with watercolors and pe pencils two time quicker. And it's not a good thing, because if you want to learn the material, you still need to spend time. Maybe if I got better skills, I would, I could also color such page quickly. But as I say, I have very limited knowledge of um, using creamy paints like gouache and acrylic, so I struggle each time when I need to use them. Yeah, yeah they can achieve perfect results, so I really want to use them, but sometimes it's just difficult to push yourself into using them. But still I think that the final look of the page isn't that bad, so I think that I definitely will continue to use them for animals. When I started to do this one I wasn't sure even how to blend, how to mix paints, but I think that in the end the nice thing was that first I was able to use dark colors and on top of it I was able to do areas of lighter fur. You know that with color pencils you work in different order. You work from the lightest color and you gradually apply darker colors later. When you work with such opaque paints you can start from dark color and move to the lighter areas. Logically for me it's easier to work, that's why I want to work with uh, opaque paints and maybe it will be one of the reasons why I finally will start to work them more frequent to work with them more frequently. For now the most um, usual way for me to use my paints acrylic or gouache is to do the background and the main image to color with markers, with pencils, with watercolors. Here is another example of a very badly mixed uh, acrylic gouache, which I used here. Again, just two similar shades of paint. And if I wouldn't need to go over this intricate design, I would be able to do this gradient. You know that you apply paints on your paper and then by going a couple of times and blending paints directly on the paper, you would be able to achieve gradient. But it doesn't work for me when I need to go around this image. Maybe I simply didn't have enough patience. Maybe I had to apply second layer uh, when paint on the first layer is dry. But still, I can see those rough borders between areas and I'm quite unhappy with such background. Now here the main image is bright enough so it distracts attention from the problems of the background but I, I know how I struggled with it and that I don't like it so it was a little bit of negative experience for myself. And for many pictures in this book where I used watercolors I, or neocolor crayons, I like background much more comparing to the backgrounds which I got with a layer of acrylic paint even when I simply used one layer. Again, those uneven cover, visible brush strokes, I don't like them and I don't know how to get rid of them, so that's my problem. At least black paint, somehow it magically uh, managed to lay down very smooth without visible strokes, so black paint is definitely my life saver for many pictures. Another example of the book where I accepted for myself that 
I can use simple plain layer of paint as a background because the main image is already detailed and pictures are usually quite colorful so nice and calm one color background can be a nice addition let me show you some works which are not so bad here you can see simple background which i made with a royal blue acrylic paint here i used two shades of acrylic gouache, more yellowish and more greenish. Still, I can see uneven coloring between, layering between two paints here, for example, here. But because paints, they were very close, it doesn't look very rough. Far from perfect, but also not very awful. Another example where I applied simple dark blue paint and on top of it I sprinkled Perlusion paint. The strange thing is that even if in real life this background doesn't look very uneven with, uh, with stains, when I start to film those contrasts started to be much more visible on the screen. Another problem. So when I look at it, it's not so bad. When I look at it on the screen, I can see again those darker and lighter areas. For the night sky it's not so bad, but still it's problems with my techniques of covering paper with acrylic paint. Here probably was the most successful gradient which I managed to achieve from pink to more intense grayish pink from light lavender into these colors. And you can see that you can get beautiful, interesting shading beautiful uh, background on top of it i again applied golden watercolor to create interesting texture effect but again with pencils i would be able to color this background probably quicker comparing to the time which i spent trying to mask here uneven brush strokes so each time it's really a struggle even if the final look is quite pleasant. I do love this page because of the color palette which I selected. Here, simple, nothing complicated, just first matte surface, which I then decorated with golden and pearl pink. So now everything looks quite well. At least such kind of background I can manage. Here on the left simple but quite um, complementary background. I think that this velvety and dark green works quite well with the bright image in the middle. You definitely don't need anything complicated with the background if you want to concentrate attention to the main image. And on the right you can see another one of the terrible examples where I tried to do gradient, I ha immediately hated those brush strokes. I wasn't confident how much water to use, how to blend uh, paints and in the same time to go around this image. So I hated it and it's one of the worst <laughs> images I have in this book. Then I discovered for myself this effect how well pencils behave on the acrylic background and that's where I use it in full strength. So acrylic, black underpaint and then all those uh, teal green, violet, blue, cerulean blue colors to create something like northern lights. Here it was quite nice to blend them on top of the layer of paint and I think that everything worked well. And I do love this contrast between simple and dark black together with some of the bright areas. I have many simple background which I did with simple layer of paint in this book. Something went better, something went worse. But well, that's a constant struggle. Another experiment I did in Botanicum here. 
you know that I usually struggle with everything in Maria Trolle books. So I decided that maybe for such images I can try the same style of the background which worked for me in Emily Lindehall Ober book. So simple one color plain acrylic background. Well, I did it and it still worked, uh, looked unbalanced for me. Much more details in the bottom part of both pages and empty and boring uh, blue-gray background on top. So I started to experiment with applying soft pastel on top of pencils. And instead of beautiful shady or misty effect around the main image, I just created dirt and I wasn't able to delete it even with a razor. I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but I can see it. Those dirty areas which I created by spreading soft pastel. Well, so this technique definitely didn't work for me at all. It's just my bad luck in the books by Maria Trolle. Doesn't matter how many efforts I put into it, in the end I always managed to mess up. Well, but I still continue my struggle and I continue my experiments. Now, much more frequently I use my acrylic paints in a very simple way, when I color everything with pencils. And if I feel that I am unable to apply another layer of pencils, or when I need to add light color on top of the dark areas, that's where my paints are quite helpful. For example, here with my very light gray, I added a little bit of texture on the fur of the white wolf on her hair, I masked some of the black lines, I outlined all those feathers. So for some of the elements, for the snow on the branches, it was helpful. Of course, it um, it's very limited usage of such a potential media as acrylic and gouache paints, but at least it's somewhere where I can use them. And of course for the winter pictures, where you need to create impression of the falling snow, I definitely recommend to purchase titanium white, doesn't matter acrylic or gouache, they just have to be opaque and maybe light blue. It definitely will improve all your winter pictures. Here I also outlined and masked some of the black lines, a little bit on her feathers, a little bit on the fire. So just like I use it when I don't need matching color of Posca or when I want to save my Posca, when I need to cover big areas, then I use my acrylic or gouache for masking black lines. More experiments with paints I did in my Escape 2 series of books. And again, um, here we have spread where I started to do acrylic background and I was so unhappy that I dropped it completely. Maybe I will finish it later because now when I look at it, I think that all those uneven areas which I don't like now, you can probably see that I wasn't very careful when I did this area, still some of the lighter stains here and I got them because it was different amount of water I used for this uh, pistachio green color. Directly from the bottle it was too thick and creamy, I wasn't able to use it to go carefully around all the tiny elements. When I started to add more water, it was easier to work around all those elements, but they started to get those more lighter areas. Well, maybe it's not a problem. Uh, maybe when I do the colorful central part, it all will be totally forget forgotten about all those problems. But somehow it disappointed me and I dropped the spread completely. Sometimes it happens. But in Escape to Oz, I started to use more paints when I discovered that I simply can't use watercolors because of the different type of paper. And here, no, it's not Escape to Oz. I had to uh, and to bring uh, Escape to Wonderland. Sorry, guys. Yes, 
Yes, Escape to Wonderland has a different kind of paper, which doesn't work with my watercolors, so I started to experiment with gouache paints. And I think that with gouache I started to get better results. Here I do love my uh, ochre and light yellow background, which I did even around such intricate design, which I have here. Quite pleasant on the left, on the right, at least it worked for this page. Here uh, with a blue acrylic, which I used with bigger amount of water to get more transparent look, I managed to cover top part of the page, so also not so bad for the sky. And my favorite area where I used uh, matte gouache first and then on top of it perishant and metal watercolors. It's for this image. And I think that will be definitely one of the books where I will continue to experiment with paints. First of all, because I don't have any other choice, watercolors create ugly dots and stains, and because of the smaller size and some of the images which I am not afraid to lose, so I can experiment on them more freely. And now let's have a look at all the paints which I gathered so far. For a person who uses acrylic paints only from time to time, I gathered a ridiculous amount of paints. First, let me show you brushes which I use with my gouache and acrylic paints. And it's different from my watercolor set. Here I also have synthetic brushes, but these brushes, they are more mm, I don't know, resilient, sturdy, slightly more hard, comparing to very soft fake squirrel brushes which I use for watercolors. With such more um, hard brushes it's easier to work with thick and creamy texture of acrylic and gouache paints. I purchased a set from Amazon, it was cheap, but it serves me well. In that set I had several sizes of round brushes. I already mentioned that I prefer first to outline main image with small round brush and then to fill in remaining area of the background with flat brushes and I have various sizes of them. Of course such big size it's not very useful for the books but this medium size quite helpful. I think that size of the brush is important if you don't want to have a lot of the visible brush strokes, so I am glad that I have a nice set of brushes in just one set. Nice variety of brushes. So my acrylic paints. First I got this set of professional grade Italian paints by Mimery. And of course, for professional artists, it would be perfectly enough to have such set and professional artists would mix all desirable colors from just this beautiful and very nice set. But I love to purchase pre-mixed paints and besides many of these colors I purchased not only because I really needed new shades of colors, new paints, but simply because they look so attractive in the art store. Now I'm talking about this Amsterdam acrylic. It's product by Dutch ro brand Royal Talents. The good thing is that you can purchase big tubes if you need huge amount of paint or you can purchase this smaller size, which is perfect for us colorists. And in, in the art store, their stands with paints, they look so nice, so attractive, that each time I simply can't, can't resist and I purchase them like candies. Here on the package you can find all necessary information, name of the page. Uh, here we have a light fastness, which is not very important for me, but what is important is opacity or transparency. Here is a sign that we have opaque paint and some of the paints here, they are semi-transparent or semi-opaque and some of them, they are completely transparent. You can see this clear sign. When I just started to 
accumulate paints for my coloring books, I was more interested in acrylic paints, because as usual I work with first layer of acrylic paints and then I work on details with pencils. And when I compared working on the layer of acrylic and on the layer of gouache paints, it was much easier to work on the acrylic paints. Sometimes gouache, which is more thick and creamy, it creates more rough surface and more tooth on the paper. And when you start to work with pencils, um, pencil strokes are more visible and you can't get very smooth coverage. So first I was interested in purchase acrylic paints. But then I realized that many of interesting shades of acrylic paints, like this uh, dark blue colors from Prussian blue, indigo, ultramarine, you simply can't find them to be opaque. All of such paints, because of the quality of the pigment, uh, uh, they are mostly transparent and when you use them for the background, it's not the effect which I wanted in my books. So I started to move from acrylic paints to gouache because I really love those plain um, uh, smooth backgrounds made with one color where you have very nice coverage and their matte velvety surface. But of course such paints they are still nice to use them as underpaint and I really appreciate all those paints which are opaque and which you can use for masking black lines. You can see that my blue colors, they are nice, attractive, but they are transparent, not very good for masking black lines. But some of the colors are like this. Warm gray, Naples green or Naples uh, red yellow or light rose, they are actually very helpful when you need to mask black lines on the portraits, these acrylics, they are very valuable. On this paints you can work with pencils and you can use them for masking black lines on faces or with a warm gray on the fur of the animals so i definitely recommend if you love to color without visible black lines light rose or this warm gray or naples green all those light pastel colors they can be quite helpful uh, when I realized that I mostly use my paints for doing simple, plain, colorful backgrounds, I started to accumulate colors which I use the most. So I mostly have blue shades, violet shades, and then I realized that Ukrainian manufacturer Rosa also has quite nice paints for the very moderate price and nice selection of colors. So after Amsterdam, I started to look at Ukrainian Rosa paints. You can see that here I have those pleasant colors which we can use for the sky, two shades of blue. It's porcelain blue and royal blue. Then I have another tube of paint which also can be used for flesh. It calls Naples flesh. Very nice for the fair skin tone. And of course I have green if I need to do texture of grass. And here I have dark paints, black and uh, paints gray and indigo. Indigo is transparent, paints gray is opaque. So together I can use them for creating almost black and dark blue background. When I realize that I need acrylic paint, but color is not so often used. I can purchase it in even smaller size. These paints, as they are also by Ukrainian brand Rosa, they are very cheap. They are for those who love color by numbers or for some decorative purposes. So they are simply very cheap version of their more professional lines. But they have a huge variety of colors. So if I need some crazy purple or orange, which I don't need in huge tube, I can easily purchase them in such small bottles. I have a couple of uh, metallic colors, which are also not bad. And I absolutely love 
their black color. With just one layer of this very cheap and simple black paint I can get very nice velvety matte background so this one it's definitely my favorite i absolutely love this paints and i am grateful that we have such a decent paints from ukrainian manufacturer they have pleasant colors of pastel shades so you can also use them for backgrounds now let me show you my last set of very interesting and unique paints here i have this 12 shades of gray acrylic set when i saw it on Amazon, I was so interested in this unusual color palette. Here you can see which colors we have. So they mostly are pigments mixed with gray. Colors are muted. They have quite nice texture, they are creamy, they cover nicely. So I'm quite happy with the set and it's my huge mistake that I don't use them more often. I am really preoccupied that they can dry before I actually start to use them. Of course I use them if I need to add texture or mask lines on the buildings, on the stonework or on the animals. I can easily find nicely shades of cold grey, blue grey, warm grey colors, uh, brown grey. Very helpful. But to do the whole painting with them I used it just a couple of times. And I definitely will try to use them more often. I think that it's one of the most interesting sets which I own. So that's where my regular acrylic paints. I also have acrylic gouache. You know that acrylic paint, it becomes permanent after drying. Gouache paints remains water soluble, so you can reactivate it after drying and that's the biggest difference between regular acrylic and regular gouache. And also acrylic paints, they can create slightly more glossy surface and gouache usually it's a very matte and velvety surface. So I have something between those two paints which is acrylic gouache. All my acrylic gouache is by Japanese brand Turner. I know that there are similar acrylic gouaches from other brands, but I have only Turner. I have them in smaller and bigger size. Let me grab my set and let me uh, put those acrylic paints a little bit aside to clear my table. Here I found my swatches of those great acrylic paints. You can see that all colors are muted, nothing is bright, colors look very natural and that's why I love this set, quite interesting. And now acrylic gouache. I have a set of 24 regular colors. They also are available in bigger and smaller tubes. So I have this set of smaller tubes. Again, a very nice variety of colors. They create matte surface, very opaque coverage, but after drying they are totally permanent, just like regular acrylics. That's why I really love them. They have very cream and thick texture, so you, you need to adjust how much water you need to use, depending from what you need to do, color with them or to get nice opaque background. Selection of colors is really good. I love also to use their white paint for the highlights. And after that I decided to purchase more interesting colors from Jackson's Art individually. And there I discovered that they also have a line of Japanese colors. All these colors in this line, they have interesting also um, slightly grayed, muted colors, a lot of pastel shades, but they have slightly different texture. They are thicker and texture which you get from these paints it's even more rough comparing to the regular gouache. I managed to use them by applying bigger amount of water but they are better for uh, 
painting, not for doing big areas of plain colors. Because of the additional water, sometimes brush strokes are more visible, but colors, they are absolutely amazing. So I have several of such paints. You can see that I use them only for the details and mostly on top of the pencils where I am unable to do something with pencils where paper is already burnished. I can still use one of these shades of greens to add grass, to add leaves. They also have very pleasant pastel line of colors and these paints I definitely can recommend. They have more delicate texture comparing to Japanese colors and shades are also quite pleasant. pleasant. They are definitely not budget paints and honestly you can find something more uh, cheaper for your colorings and paints still will be quite nice. As I said, you can find very pleasant colors in the hobby lines on the stores where they can have those where they have small jars of paints but sometimes we need to have something nice and that's where I purchased those acrylic wash they are nice and I hope that one day I will be able to use more of these paints not only for the details and not only for the background but the whole coloring whole painting um, let me show you color palette of all I own, but sorry, it's a little bit dirty. Um, I don't know. Uh, you can see that this swatching card, it laid on the window, I forgot about it. And you can see that I, the color of the um, ball paint where I put names, it started to uh, to be very light because of the sunlight, but all the paints, they are still bright and intact. The quality of these paints, it's really very high. They are not easy to adjust to, but the result you will, you can get, it's really, really nice. And finally, I have a regular gouache, which can be reactivated with water. Such regular gouache, it's much cheaper comparing to acrylic gouache. For example, I have those paints. Here and here. A regular gouache, at least in my country, it's uh, relatively cheap. Of course, it can create some problems if you want to layer or to create a very complicated background. You apply the first la layer of gouache and if you want to apply layer of pearlescent watercolors or metal watercolors, you have to remember that the first layer still can be reactivated and to blend with the next layer. But mm, if you simply want to cover background with pleasant color, gouache can be quite helpful. Here I have my cheap Ukrainian rosa paints. They are nice, they are cheap, texture all is also quite pleasant, very good variety of colors, so I started to collect them also. I especially love their white, titanium white, it's definitely must have, you can see it quite often in my colorings. I love to do with this paints highlights, form of the, on the ocean waves, snow, so titanium white from Rosa, it's definitely my must have. I also have this set of smaller jars, it's from a Russian brand uh, White Nights, the same as watercolors, it's called Masterclass, but the manufacturer is the same. They are also professional grade, small jars, also nice paints. I have this set already for five years and they are still perfectly well for usage. But my last gouache love is paints by Arteza. If you are lazy just like me and if you don't like to blend, to mix colors yourself, then this set of smaller tubes and with huge amount of colors, that's definitely for you. Apart from regular colors, here we also have some metal and pearlescent. It was another reason why I purchased them. When I selected this set, I had only 
transparent watercolors and you know that quite often they are visible only on the black paper. On white paper many metal or pearlescent colors they are not very beautiful. And gouache because of the opacity you can work on the white paper and you can get beautiful shiny colors. I also love that they are in tubes so they are uh, less uh, uh, easy to dry, they will be more um, easy to store even for the colors which you don't use quite often. I think that in tubes they are stored better. And I do love them. I don't need a lot of the paint, so I'm pretty happy with the smaller amount of color. Almost all of them are quite opaque, just a couple of colors. Again, blue, ultramarine blue and deep green. They are semi-transparent, but it's okay. So this set I definitely can recommend. Sometimes I have some <laughs> not very good words about Arteza products, but about this set I have only good opinion and definitely it was one of the best purchases of art supplies which I did. Especially now when I started to color more in mythographic series where you need to mask a lot of objects, a lot of additional elements, those paints from Arteza, they are life savers. Well, that was all about my acrylic and gouache paints. Again, it's my biggest regret that I don't use them more often for coloring or for painting, but I hope that one day I will gather my courage and I will do more works with these beautiful art supplies. They are maybe not as easy to learn as pencils, but they are definitely worse because I would say that my coloring works, which I did not only with pencils, but with mixed media, where I combine different medias, watercolors, paints uh, like acrylic or gouache and then pencils, they are definitely the best which I did, so I really want to expand more, to work more in this technique. Thank you and my final next part will be about my gel pens, about my felt tip pens, about my crayons, soft pastels, so everything which I hadn't shown you yet. Thank you and until the last part of this series.